The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with you always. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is another portion of our epistle reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter. This is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 6 to 8, where Peter wrote, For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone, and a stone that causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. My dear fellow living stones who are attached to Christ, the living stone. Our reading for today, it begins with a quote from God that Peter took from Isaiah chapter 28. God had said, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Oh, construction companies and engineers here in and workers here in Michigan had to be thrilled when finally they could get back to work a couple of days ago after being out of work for close to two months or so. Well, when you think about how thrilled they were, maybe God was really thrilled thousands of years ago when he constructed the heavens and the earth and made this perfect world and a place for Adam and Eve to live. Of course, we know what happened after that with the fall into sin. But God had to be thrilled when he constructed the heavens and the earth. And perhaps he was even more thrilled when about 2,000 years ago, what God did is he began another construction project. And what he did then is he well, it says he laid this stone in Zion, and that's talking about Jesus, the living stone, made him the foundation for the New Testament Christian church. And now when we think of that picture, of course, that church, it already existed since the fall into sin with God's first gospel promise, promising the seed of the woman to crush the serpent's head. But that church always existed then as the church in prophecy. But when God laid this stone in Zion, when he made Jesus the cornerstone for his church, well then what we have is not the church in prophecy anymore, but the church in fulfillment. The church in fulfillment. In our reading for today. It talks about Jesus as, well, using two pictures of him being this living stone that is the cornerstone and also a capstone. And first he's referred to as a cornerstone. And today if a church or building or some other building has a cornerstone, Usually what that is, is it's just a decorative stone that tells you when the building was built. But years ago, when a cornerstone was used, it was often a foundation stone, a key stone in the foundation of the building. Or it also was a stone that determined the lines and the angles and the, of the foundation and the whole structure of the building. But it was a very, very important stone like that. And if the stone, that cornerstone was removed, well then the integrity of the building would be compromised 
and there could be some problems, some collapsing or something like that. In one of our hymns, we sing, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. God's church is built on Christ. And it's such a tragic thing that sometimes people build their hopes for eternity on things other than on Christ. Perhaps they build their hopes for eternity on some other God that doesn't really even exist, of course. Maybe they build their hopes for eternity on themselves and their works or on their abilities to try to please God. These things are what that hymn would describe as sinking sand. But Christ, well, he's the solid rock. On him, with him as the basis, with him as the focus for our eternity, well, you'll stand, I'll stand, we'll be safe and secure forever. When we're trusting in him, in his life, his death and resurrection, we're safe and secure forever. Oh, some of you have heard me tell this story when I was vicaring in Wisconsin Rapids. There was an older gentleman in the congregation I was serving, and unfortunately what happened to him one day is that he was driving his car, lost control of it, and he hit a house. And that house was actually just moved a couple inches off of its foundation. It still kind of was on the foundation, but when the house was inspected, they came to realize, even though it was kind of on the foundation, because it was moved a little bit off, the inspectors came to realize that it was going to end up collapsing, and so they ended up tearing down the house. It wouldn't continue standing because it wasn't on the foundation. Another hymn says, Christ is our cornerstone, on him alone we build. And on him, we're safe and secure. We're safe and secure despite the attacks that Satan would hurl our way, despite the problems and troubles that would come this way in this life. Well, on him we build, we're safe and secure. Maybe think of another story. Back years ago, there was a lady that I served she had been a strong lady, but she was hit by cancer. And that cancer, it, it so weakened her, made her a shell of her former self. And I remember her saying, I don't know how people get through something like this without Jesus. Physically, she had been so weakened, but spiritually, even though her physical shell was so weakened, spiritually, when I looked at her, I saw someone who was on Christ the solid rock. I saw someone who was so strong. Her faith, her God-given faith, gave her strength in those times. She was never going to be put to shame and we'll never be put to shame when Christ is our cornerstone. Well, Peter says here, now to you who believe this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Oh, some of you have seen the fancy diagram that I keep in my Bible. Imagine being a construction worker and finding a stone that maybe looks like this one. If you saw a stone like this one, what you might be inclined to do is just to toss it aside because it's not like your standard brick or cement block like a construction worker would normally 
want to use in construction. Well, Jesus kind of liked this stone. When the Jewish religious leaders looked at him, he didn't fit what they wanted. And so they tossed him aside. But when God built his church, and here now, maybe what we can think of with his church is think of it as an arch like this, the other part of my fancy diagram. If you think of this arch like this, well, God needed that tossed aside stone to hold the arch together. Now imagine you pull this stone out and what happens? The whole thing kind of collapses. And this picture of Jesus being the capstone, it's such a significant picture for us to realize because what Jesus does is he holds our lives together. Sometimes our lives, they maybe seem as if they're all falling apart, as if everything is lost, as if there's nothing but problems. But Jesus holds our lives together. Jesus held things together for that cancer-stricken lady so that, spiritually speaking, she was strong to the end and, and the Lord Jesus did take her home to heaven. In these troubled times in which we are right now, if your life seems to be falling apart or if, if there are other times in your life when things just seem to be going wrong or, or whatever like that, remember that Jesus as the capstone, what Jesus as the capstone does is he holds everything together for us in our lives. He holds things together. He helps us to stand so that we don't fall. He'll guide us through life's trials and troubles and keep us safe for heaven. Peter says, to those who do not believe, Jesus is a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. Jesus is just what everyone really needs. But unbelief rejects that cornerstone or capstone and how tragic, how tragic it is that some reject what they need more than anything else. They reject their cornerstone, their capstone. But we who by the grace of God believe in Jesus as our Savior, we're so blessed. Things could seemingly be collapsing or having all kinds of different problems in this life. But as the hymn says, his oath, his covenant and blood, support me in the raging flood. When every earthly prop gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. When the going gets tough, when it seems like so much is going around, wrong, when it seems like all around us there's sinking sand, thank God that he has laid a stone, Jesus, in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him, by the grace of God, that's you and me, the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Again, by the grace of God, that's you and me, and in Jesus. On Christ the solid rock, our cornerstone, our capstone, we're always safe and secure. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for being our firm foundation, our capstone, our cornerstone. 
Thank you for being that foundation, that, that living stone that keeps us safe and secure always. As we're faced with life's trials and troubles, as we deal with sin, help us to always remember that you've taken care of those things for us. And when, by the grace of God, we keep looking to you, we're always going to stand. We're never going to fall. It's all because of you. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.